Hey, love. Pardon the lighting in the room. I had a headache came upon me suddenly. And, uh, then I curled up in bed. Um, <laughs> I turned off the light and promptly knocked over my water onto all my serious books. As a result, you can probably see all of my serious books are chilling, open. And on that note, it's snowing. You can see all the snow on the street. But now it's back to other things. Alternating again, we're going to Now We Are Six. Come out with me. There's sun on the river and sun on the hill. You can hear the sea if you stand quite still. There's eight new puppies at Roundabout Farm, and I saw an old sailor with only one arm. But everyone says, run along, run along, run along. All of them say, run along, I'm busy as can be. Everyone says, run along, there's a little darling. I'm a little darling, why don't they run with me? There's wind on the river and wind on the hill. There's a dark dead water wheel under the mill. I saw a fly which had just been drowned, and I know where a rabbit goes into the ground. But everyone says, run along. Run along, run along. All of them say, yes, dear, and never notice me. Everyone says, run along, there's a little darling. If I'm a little darling, then why won't they come and see? Down by the pond. Don't talk, anybody. Don't come near. Can't you see that the fish might hear? He thinks I'm playing with a piece of string. He thinks I'm another sort of funny thing. But he doesn't know that I'm fishing. He doesn't know I'm fishing. That's what I'm doing. Fishing. No, I'm not. I'm newting. Don't cough, anybody. Don't come by. Any small noise makes a newt feel shy. He thinks I'm a bush or a new sort of tree. He thinks it's somebody, but he doesn't think it's me. And he doesn't know I'm newting. No, he doesn't know I'm newting. And that's what I'm doing. Newting. The Little Black Hen. Barry Man and Baxter, Petty Boy and Penn, and Old Farmer Middleton are five big men. And all of them were after the little black hen. She ran quickly, then ran fast. Baxter was first, and Barryman was last. I sat and I watched by the old plum tree. She squawked through the hedge, and she came to me. The little black hen said, Oh, it's you, and I said, Thank you. How do you do? Little black hen, what did they want of those five big men? The little black hen, she said to me, They want me to lay them an egg for tea. If they were emperors, if they were kings, I'm much too busy to lay such things. I'm not a king, and I haven't a crown. I've climbed up trees, and I tumbled down. I can shut one eye and count it ten. So lay me an egg, please, little black hen. Little black hen said, what will you pay if I lay you an egg for Easter day? I'll give you a please, and how do you do? I'll show you the bear who lives in the zoo. I'll show you the nettle place on my leg. I'll show you a great big Easter egg. Now, if you'll lay me a great big Easter egg. The little black hen said, I don't care for how you do a big brown bear, but I'll lay you a beautiful Easter egg if you show me the little place on your leg. I, loved her, I showed her the place where I had my sting. She touched it gently with one black wing. Littles don't turt if you count to ten. And now for the egg, said the little black hen. When I wake up on Easter day, I shall see my egg she's promised to lay. If I were emperors, if I were kings, it couldn't be fuller of wonderful things. Barry Man and Baxter, Petty Boy and Penn, and Old Farmer Middleton are five big men. All of them are wanting an egg for their tea. The Little Black Hen is much too busy. The Little Black Hen is much too busy. The Little Black Hen is much too busy. She's laying an egg for me. <laughs> oh, these are wonderful. Oh, it stops snowing. A little cover of white. There are lots and lots of people who are always asking things. Like dates and pounds and ounces in the name of funny kings. And the answer is either six pence or a hundred inches long. And I don't know, I don't, and I know they'll think me silly if I get the answers wrong. So Pooh and I go whispering, and Pooh talks very bright. And I say, well, I six pence. I say, well, I say six pence, but I don't suppose I'm right. And then it doesn't matter what the answer ought to be. Because if he's right, I'm right. And if he's wrong, it isn't me. The good little girl. It's funny how often they say to me, Jane... Have you been a good girl? Have you been a good girl? And when they have said it, they say it again. Have you been a good girl? Have you been a good girl? 
I go to a party, I go out for tea, I go to my aunt for a week at the sea. I come back from school when playing a game. Whenever I come from, it's always the same. Well, have you been a good girl, Jane? It's always the end of the loveliest day. Have you been a good girl? Have you been a good girl? I went to the zoo and I wanted to say, Have you been a good girl? Have you been a good girl? Well, what did they think that I went there to do? What should I want to do bad at the zoo? And I should be likely to say if I had. So that's why it's funny when mummy and dad, this asking and asking in case I was bad. Well, have you been a good girl, Jane? And this adorable picture of her feeding an animal. Not being good. But mischievous. A thought. Oh, this is about me. If I were John and John were me, then he'd be six and I'd be three. If John were me and I were John, I shouldn't have these trousers on. That was good. <laughs> King Hillary and the Beggarman. Of Hilary the Great and Good, they tell a tale at Christmas time. I've often thought the story would be prettier, but just as good. If almost anybody should translate it into a rhyme. So I've done the best I can for lack of some more learned man. Oh, oh. <laughs> good King Hilary said to his Chancellor, Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, Run to the Wicker Gate quickly, quickly, run to the Wicker Gate, and see who's knocking. It may be a rich man, seaborn from Araby, Bringing me peacocks, emeralds, and ivory. It may be a poor man, travel worn and weary, bringing me oranges to put in my stockings. Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, laughed both loud and free. There's a little asterisk that goes down and says, Ha ha ha. I have served your majesty man to man since your first majesty's reign began. I've often walked and I've never, never ran. Never, 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 quoth he. Good King Hilary said to his Chancellor, Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, walk to the Wicked Gate quickly, quickly, walk to the Wicked Gate and see who's knocking. Maybe a captain, hawk nosed bearded, bringing me gold dust, spices, and sandalwood. Maybe a scullion, carefree and whistling, bringing me sugar plums to put in my stocking. Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, laughed both loud and free. I've served this palace since I was four. I'll serve it in the palace for many years more. I opened the window, but never a door. Never, 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 quoth he. Good Lord, King Hillary said to his Chancellor, Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, open the window, quickly, quickly, open the window and see who's knocking. It may be a waiting maid, apple cheek dimpled, sent by her mistress to bring me greeting. It may be children, anxious whispering, bringing me coconuts to put in my stocking. Cob nuts to put in my stocking. <laughs> oh goodness, these kids know something. Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor, laugh both loud and free. Your Majesty, I'll serve till I die, as Lord Chancellor, not a spy. To peep from the lattices, no, not I. Never, 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 quoth he. Good King Hilary looked at his Chancellor, Proud Lord Willoughby, Lord High Chancellor. He said no word to his stiff set Chancellor, but ran to the Muhaghe to see who was knocking. He found no rich man trading from Arby, he found no captain, blue eyed and weather tanned. He found no mistress maid sent by her mis waiting maid sent by her mistress, but only a beggar man with one red stocking. Good King Hillary looked at the beggar man, laughed at him three, <laughs> laughed at him three times three, and he turned the beggar man around. You thews are strong, your armor stout. Come, come, throw it, Lord. <laughs> oh, hold on, this is good. Good King Hillary looked at the beggar man and laughed him three times, laughed him three times three, and he turned that beggar man about. Your thews are strong, your armor stout. Come, throw me a Lord High Chancellor out, and take this place. Quoth he. Now, Hilary the Good and Great, old wives at Christmas time relate this tale, which points to any rate two morals of the way. The first, whatever fortune brings, don't be afraid of doing things. Especially, of course, for kings, it always seems to say, but not so wisely. He who begs with one bread stocking on his legs will be, as sure as eggs are eggs, a chancellor some day. Swing song. Here I go up in my swing, ever so high. I am the king of the fields and the king of the town. I am the king of the earth and the king of the sky. Here I go up in my swing. Now I go down. Explained. Elizabeth Ann said to her nan, Please will you tell me how God began? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> the starting off strong. <laughs> Somebody must have made him, so who could it be? Because I want to know. The nurse said, well, and Ann said, well. 
I know you know, and I wish you'd tell. And Nurse took pins from her mouth and said, Now then, darling, it's time for bed. Elizabeth Ann had a wonderful plan. She would run around the world till she found a man who knew exactly how God began. She got up early, she dressed and ran, trying to find an important man. She ran to London and knocked on the door of the Lord High Doodlem's coach and four. Please, sir, if there's anyone in, however and ever did God begin. Lord High Doodlem lay in bed, but out of the window, large and red, came the Lord High, Chance Lord High Coachman's face instead. The Lord High Coachman laughed and said, Well, what put that in your quaint little head? Elizabeth Ann went home again and took from the ottoman Jennifer Jane. Jennifer Jane, said Elizabeth Ann, tell me at once how God began. And Jane, who didn't much care for speaking, replied in her usual way by squeaking. What did it mean? Well, to be quite candid, I don't know, but Elizabeth Ann did. Elizabeth Ann said softly, Oh, thank you, Jennifer, now I know. Twice times. There were two little bears who lived in the wood, and one of them was bad, and the other was good. Good bear learnt his twice times one, but bad bear had left all his buttons undone. I want you to know this is very well done up here. They lived in a tree when the weather was hot, and one of them was good, and the other was not. Good bears learnt his twice times two, but bad bears' thin gummies were all worn right through. They lived in a cave where the weather was cold, and they did and they didn't do what they were told. The good bear learnt his twice times three, but bad bear never had his handkerchief. They lived in the wood with a kind old aunt, and one said, yes am and the other said, shan't. Good bear learnt his twice times fours, but bad bear's nickerdies were terribly tore. And then quite suddenly, just like us, one got better and the other got worse. Good bear muddled his twice times threes, but bad bear coughed in his handkerchief. Good bear muddled his twice times two, but bad bear's think of looked like new. Good bear muddled his twice times one, but bad bear never left his buttons undone. There may be a moral, though some say not. I think there's a moral, though I don't know what. But if one gets better and the other gets worse, these two little bears are just like us. But Christopher Robin, Christopher remembers up to twice times ten. But I keep forgetting where I've put my pen. So I've had to write this one in pencil, it says in the bottom. The Morning Walk When Anna and I go out to walk, we hold each other's hands and talk of all the things we mean to do when Anna and I are forty-two. And when we thought about a thing, like bowling hoops or bicycling or falling down on Anne's balloon, we do it all the afternoon. Cradle song. Oh, Timothy Tin has ten pink toes, and ten pink toes has Timothy Tin. They go with him wherever he goes, and wherever he goes, they go with him. Oh, Timothy Tim has two blue eyes, and two blue eyes has Timothy Tim. They cry with him whenever he cries, and whenever he cries, they cry with him. Oh, Timothy Tim has one red head, and one red head has Timothy Tim. He sleeps with them, him, in Timothy's bed. Sleep well, red head of Timothy Tim. Hmm. Oh, goodness. I think I'll end on this one. Waiting at the window. These are my two drops of rain waiting on the window pane. I'm waiting here to see which winning one will be. Both of them have different names. One is John and one is James. All the best and all the worst comes from which one of them is first. James has just begun to ooze. He's the one I want to lose. John is waiting to begin. He's the one I want to win. James is going slowly on. Something sort of sticks to John. John is moving off at last. James is going pretty fast. John is whizzing down the pane. James is going slow again. James has met a sort of smear. John is getting very near. Is he going fast enough? James has found a piece of fluff. John has hurried quickly by. James was talking to a fly. John is there, and John has won. Look, I told you. Here's the sun. Oh, all right, love. I love you dearly. And I will be home soon. You better believe it. So sleep well, keep calm, find a llama, carry on. I think I'm going to treat myself to a pizza tonight. I'm much sleepy, a little headachey, and don't feel like cooking. So I'll go out into the nice cool evening, plod through the little bit of snow that's on the ground, have myself a small pizza, and come home again. And then come home. Things worked out with my landlady. Um, I sent her a message, she came up, we talked a little bit, it's all good. Um, and now the girl I'm taking my room is also sent her a message, so everything is coming up roses. That means, come the 15th, they'll be all clear for coming home, though. Sleep well, keep calm, find a llama, carry on. Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> Toot to you too. I love you, Chrissy. <laughs> Good night.